When you're making a movie or TV show, you want the cast to have chemistry. It's hard to find ways to get strangers to embrace, especially when you're working on refining the action and dialogue. But what if you could kill two birds with one stone? That's where a table read comes in. These simple exercises give your cast time to interact and find chemistry and let you hear the dialogue out loud so you can make trims and refine each scene. Hang on to the end of this video because I'm going to go over the art of table reads, how you can prep for them, and why they're important to the filmmaking process. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. If you like what you see in this video, stick around to the end because I've got a couple of photography, video, filmmaking, and editing freebies, and even some training courses that I'll tell you about that will definitely help improve your work and help grow your business through earned media exposure. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, and by hiring me to shoot or edit for you. Remember, I welcome your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video every single Wednesday. I've also done other videos on production and filmmaking, and I'll link to those in the description below as well for you, so you can watch those after this one and learn something new. So, what is a table read? Table read is a gathering of the cast, the writers, and a director where they read through the episode of the TV show or through the entire feature film. It's where everyone gets to hear the story out loud, take notes, and can circle up afterwards to make revisions if needed. In television, table reads are done prior to recording an episode so final edits of the script can be made. Table reads are an invaluable tool. If you're working on a pilot, they can help your cast to gel before you shoot. On a feature film, they can clue you into important changes that can affect or combine scenes to make your days of shooting go much easier. So how do you organize a table read? The best table reads that I've been to have a lot of snacks, a few bottles of water per person, name cards with the actor and their character, and other crew positions listed as well, if there's any, as well as printed out scripts so everyone can follow along. You also want an assortment of pens and pencils so that everyone can take notes as they go. Table reads are organized for several reasons, including they help to drive the creative process of the writers, the director, and the actors. Writers receive feedback on the projection of the dialogue. Directors learn how actors may approach the role, and they can start envisioning different shots that they're going to shoot. Actors begin the process of digging into a character and crafting their vision of how to portray that specific role. It also helps to sell the project. A table read can serve as an audition to both potential investors and to actors that haven't yet signed on to convince them that they should be a part of the film. It helps you to evaluate talent. You can learn how the actors approach the role and if the right talent has been cast. For this to be effective, the project has to be at least partially cast, however. It will help you to build team chemistry. Often, the first time the entire above-the-line staff, that is the team that guides the creative process, gets together is at the table read. So the table read serves as a team-building exercise that helps to spark chemistry amongst the cast and crew. It will help you to avoid major problems. You can spot problems and try to solve potential problems during the table read before they turn into gigantic disasters while you're shooting. So who should be involved in a table read? The essential people are the director, the writers, and the cast. And the optional people who can attend, they don't have to, but they, they should, are the director of photography, the set designer, your wardrobe, hair, makeup, and costume designers, the department heads or executives from the studio, the studio president, vocalists, 
the music director, other writers from outside the project who can polish character arcs and dialogue if needed. The more people involved in the table read, the better the chemistry that the team will have overall. And it also helps everyone from all departments uh, to collaborate as a single team to solve budgetary and practical problems that may come up. Now, if this is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. So where can you host a table read? You can do a table read virtually anywhere, frankly. Your kitchen table, a friend's house, the back lot of a large studio, or a small theater that you rent. Pretty much any place, everyone can gather together. Reading a feature-length script or a TV episode in character all the way through for the first time in a room full of important strangers can be a very nerve-wracking experience. Therefore, it's important for you or talent to be as comfortable as possible to allow them to perform to the best of their ability. So what do you need for a table read? Well, we talked about a few things, but there are a few more items that everyone should definitely have. Everyone needs pens and pencils. These are essential items to make sure everyone can take notes as they go along with the reading. You definitely need copies of the entire script. It wouldn't be much of a table read if there was nothing to read. You need to have a cast list. So you want to bring a cast list with photos of each person so you can easily recognize the actors and get acquainted with what they're going to do. You want character breakdowns. These provide a quick overview of each character and their specific role in the story arc. You should also have what's known as script slides. These are excerpts of the script that you can read together if needed. You definitely want some kind of recording device. You want to record the table read so that it lets you preview performances later and can help with extra things like marketing or distribution so you have behind the scenes footage and other marketing materials. So when do you stage a table read? Table reads typically take place towards the end of pre-production, right before the beginning of principal photography, or the production phase, which is the shooting of your movie or your show or whatever it is. During a table read, you definitely want to do the following. You want to have feedback. You want to give feedback when appropriate, but keep your responses focused on increasing morale and not upsetting everyone. You also want to be able to take constructive criticism, you know, the feedback from others. You want to listen to your dialogue. Is it too formal or clunky or repetitive? Does it flow well? Are the action lines pacing well? You want to study all this so that it comes off naturally on screen later. You want to watch your actors. You want to watch how they interact with the dialogue and if it seems natural. Is there a natural chemistry between the actors? Think about the pace of the action, their body language, and the mannerisms of the actor so you know if it's going to work on screen to get your story made. You definitely want to ask for feedback. Ask genuine questions to get genuine and true feedback from others and try not to get defensive about your work because they may actually be right and your performance may need to be tweaked some, in some way. You want to figure out if character motivations were clear. Did the characters have clearly defined arcs in the story? Was the plot easy to follow or was it convoluted? If you're an actor at a table read, you want to follow the following guidelines. Table reads are where an actor gets an opportunity to find the nuances of their character and this visibly carries over into the talent's performance when game time rolls around. In other words, when you're shooting. Just because an actor is participating in the table read doesn't mean that they are locked into the part. A table read is still part of pre-production, which means that nothing is yet concrete. There are a few things that an actor can do to leave a good impression, however. You want to read the script by yourself beforehand. This will allow you to create your own vision of the character and research certain aspects of the script so nothing will catch you by surprise during the table read. Think of it as studying for an exam. Having a familiarity with the material will allow you to be more confident and, you know, pass the test. Next, you want to arrive early. In the fast-paced world of filmmaking, you are either early or late. Being on time is actually being late. Not only does arriving early allow time to get acquainted with the rest of the cast and crew, it gives you time to prepare yourself for the read and get into character. Next, you want to perform as if your part in the project depends on it, because quite frankly, it does. Bring the same energy and enthusiasm with you as if there were a camera in front of you actually shooting the scene. 
underperforming may lead the writers to reduce your role in the story, or worse, make the executives reconsider your involvement in the project. And you never know, a project may make your career. You may win an Oscar or an Emmy. Who knows? So you want to take every opportunity and give it 100% every time you can. Next, you want to make eye contact with your co-stars. Nobody expects you off book right away. That means able to recite your lines without looking at the script during the table read. But you want to remember that the point of a table read is to build chemistry with your fellow cast members. This is impossible if you're looking at the page the entire time and unable to riff off the emotions that your co-stars are giving you. To do that, you got to look at them and they got to look at you. Never phone in your performance if you're reading for a small part. This is especially true for television as the writers can see your potential and create a larger role for the character. Showing your full potential can lead to bigger opportunities in the future. You want to drink plenty of water, especially if you're reading a lot of dialogue because your mouth will get dry. Dry mouth is no fun for anyone and will hinder your performance. You definitely want to take notes. Let your notes be a reminder of any ideas you have for character development, as well as any questions you may have for the directors and writers down the road. In conclusion, a table read is a simple and effective method of finalizing a screenplay. Everyone gets to know each other, new ideas get bounced around, and the vision of the story comes one step closer to being realized. There are no apparent negatives that can come out of this simple process, so why overlook it? My question of the day is, have you ever attended a table read? And if so, what was your role in the project? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd like to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the info that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,470 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out and then many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR mirrorless and video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos, and particularly your videos, to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get the cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques, such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up and editing video in under two hours and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors to make your workflow go faster. And now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition, because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with, without spending a fortune on advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you and more information as well. Finally, if you've followed me for a while now, you may know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers, just like you on Facebook, where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called video producers and content creators. I love new members 
who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experience. You will find a link to that group in the description below. So feel free to join it where you can learn even more.